man. How are you? Welcome to oh, Greg Lawson. Welcome to interview interviews number fourteen. I didn't think to get a glass of wine. I've got a, I've got an empty an empty pot of rice. I could. I've got a blue water bottle with um. Gin and tonic. No, nah, Pachin. No, it's not, that's not. It's lemonade, actually. <laughs> Cheers, Tom. You're looking. You're looking very handsome, and your hair is fantastic. It's kind of. It's almost like Elizabethan. Um, oh, I look, you know what? I love when I'm looking at you, and I've been watching on the interviews as well, because you've got your background on. Your hair is constantly changing shape. Yeah, because if you could see really what's behind me, it's a total mess. You know. All oh, right. There's a point where reality meets fantasy around yeah. here. Obviously, we we've, we've worked together for you know. A long, yeah. a, you know, 20 years, man and boy and girl with the beard. And uh, you're coming to play time with, with Moishe's Bagels. I think there's a young Brazilian bass player that's up and coming in the band. Yeah, yeah, he's, um, he's lovely. I mean, he's a bit naive, you know. He's got things to learn, but um, we've all been there, haven't we, you know? Um, oh, do you like my chair, by the way? Listen. Can you hear that? I don't want people to think that I'm kind of breaking wind or something in an like interview. Rudy Giuliani. It, it does make, yes, or melting. Well, it does make noises. You've seen my t-shirt. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> of course, that's where it was, wasn't it? The, yeah. the, this is a quiz for the, any viewers can tell me how, how this is connected to Rudy Giuliani. They're gonna win a in common CD. So Brilliant. there you go. Now, can you describe yourself as a musician? Because we've argued for many years about whether you can define musicians uh, as a classical musician, jazz music, etc. How would you, at this point in the, in the century and, and your career, how would you describe yourself as a, as a musician? I just used the term musician. I knew this was going to come up. I knew you were going to ask me this. I had this thought that you asked me this. Um, I'm, just, I'm just a musician. I'm, I'm just... Omni Describes Omni myself Omni. as an artiste. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, listen, I mean, seriously, I just think I, I'm tired of categorizations in music. I'm sick and tired of it. I don't think it helps us. I don't think it helps us know anything about ourselves. I don't think it helps us explore the nature of the route we've chosen, of all the possible routes. I don't think it helps us understand that all these possible routes have commonalities. And that I don't think it helps us celebrate musicianship as this universal kind of thing. And it's just daft. I spent a lot of many, a lot of years learning a lot of classical music, going through its form, you know. But all the time I was still carrying on doing other things. And yeah, there were periods in my life when I was completely focused. Funnily enough, I just heard a Mozart symphony the other day, right, on the on the radio. And I hadn't you know, I hadn't heard it for probably I don't know, 15 years. And it took me right back to the chamber orchestra days when I was in the Scottish chamber orchestra and I was absolutely like 100% focused on classicism and all the, all the beautiful things that classicism has to offer you as a, as a violinist, like articulacy and balance and symmetry and all these beautiful things. And I was, for, the, for a good few years, I was into nothing else, you know? But what then- age, What age were you at that point? In my thirties, I suppose. You know, um, are you not in your thirties yeah. now, <laughs> darling? <laughs> it's only a couple of years away. I'll be in my double thirties. No, but the thing is that then, after that, um, the bagels happened very quickly. When I was in the chamber orchestra, they playing, started playing tangos in the tango band. And for me, I took I took all the things I'd learned before classical music into classical music. And you know, I was trying to get out of classical music for about thirty years. I was, do you know what I mean? I was like a man trying to fight his way out of a rubber bag or something. Um, and I don't, I haven't played in an orchestra now for, for quite a long time, years now. I've no intention of playing in an orchestra. Um, it's like Kinky Friedman, you know, Kinky Friedman, the, the country and western singer says that after 20 years of touring as a country and western singer, he's come to hate the sound of the human voice. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit like that with me and especially the classical music, I've come to really despise the institutions. I, I really don't like what they stand for. I don't like the way they teach. I don't like the way they think. I'm sick and tired of divisions. When I was a kid, 
when I first went played the, the, the fiddle, I stood up and I played the fiddle in assembly, played a lot of Northumbrian folk tunes. And until that point, every single day I went into school with my violin on my back, which is once a week for a 15 minute lesson with a little old man. I had to fight my way into school. I mean, I arrived at violin lessons with blood on my hands to play the violin. I fought for the privilege, right? Would you have to fight a sequence of like seven or eight boys Hundred. and girls or just boys? Oh, hundreds, hundreds. I a mean, like, of, is it like was it like Lord of the Rings? Yeah, uh, and like orcs coming at you. And orcs coming at me. Um, I mean, it just got it got progressively more and more. Eventually, neighbouring schools would send in kids to join in, and, and you would just be them knocking off. them out. Like, yeah. would you hit them with the violin or, yeah. or just fists? yeah with the bow? I'd this, fight them okay, off with the was... bow. <laughs> so I learned to swash and buckle. No, but the point was <laughs> that when I played, when I stood up and played folk music, right. All of a sudden, I was playing the fiddle, and everyone. The next day, I walked into school. I was everyone's best friend. An obvious division between the way I was perceived. If I played the violin, it was negative. If I played the fiddle, it was positive. But it's the same bloody instrument. It's the same person playing it. Same musical mind thinking it. So I think long answer to your question is that I've always been always been trying to be a musician, and I'd say that over the years of playing, I've learned enough. That I would call myself one now, and and actively. Well, you know, you're, you're not going to get any argument for me that you're a musician. I mean, you're one of the one of the best musicians I've ever I've ever played with, and playing music with you has been some of my most favourite musical uh, experiences. But the point where we disagree on this, and you know that I disagree with you, hmm. and it's coming from a place of love, and. It's because mainly the way you use your hair when you're playing is very classical. It's a, it's a classical affectation. This sort of this sort of that? very kind of sexualized hair play that goes on, and you know that it's the audience love it, and it go. It's a long tradition of classical hair play. Now there are some young jazzers like Fergus McCready that are starting to use their hair in a way <laughs> that's play. borrowing. I would say it's borrowing, but the, the other but the other point is, I do think there's a difference in skill set that you get from whichever tradition you grow up in, mm -hmm. and uh, which make which does make a difference. You know, so if you're really familiar with improvising over chords, you you tend to come from a jazz background. If you really know loads and loads of traditional tunes and the authentic ornamentation, you tend to come from a traditional background. If you're incredibly good at reading and the precision and control of converting the tape music into beautiful music, you tend to come from a classical background. Now, I'm not saying there's no overlaps between skill sets. And I'm not saying that you can't expand your skill sets as an adult, but you tend to have a home base that you come from. That's the first point. And the second point is where the authority in the music lies. And I would argue that in classical music, the authority lies in the score. And in traditional music, the authority lies in the tune and in the sort of, especially when it's an old tune, the way the tune's meant to be played. Whereas in jazz, there is an authority in the tradition, but the authority is really about create, you know, the, the pressure is to actually create something in the moment. And mm -hmm. I think that's radically different in, the, in terms of the model of music making and the relationship between the musician and the musical score, for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. And I think those are so, so different. Well, they are different, yeah, but, but what's common is the musician, the musician's instinct, the musical instinct. I mean, look, I didn't read first, so I took my non-reading. I learned everything by ear. I still play by ear. I read music, but I'm usually, I'm not reading music. I'm not actually, you can ask any of my desk partners. I'm not a great reader. I, can, I did it well enough professionally to be able to, but I'm using, I'm using the senses I learned before I went into the classical world to help me as a classical musician. And those senses of timing and rhythm, I was, I've, I've improvised my whole life. I don't improvise as a jazz musician, but I still improvise. I don't believe that improvising is the only, is only takes place in jazz. No, no, I agree with you completely. You know what I mean? Oh, this, I grew this to just piss them all off, to piss off the management. You know what I mean? It used to infuriate them. I was always asked by management to get my hair cut, you know, to wear a tie. Well, yeah. your hair's fine for playtime, so all right, cool. you're good. You're absolutely good. 
I agree with you. There's a common language and a commonality between musicians, and at the end of the day, we can all we all play together, and uh, the, not and every musician is different, you know. So so everybody is is making their own journey through with the Grit Orchestra, which has been one of the great the great joys of my my career being part of that, which is your one of your great achievements. I always say to people. You know, like El Sistema, they have this, they have this sort of mantra that the symphony orchestra is a model for human society, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of say, well, it, it's sort of like a whole bunch of people being told what to do by one person on the, or the authority <laughs> of a dead German white man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. generally, I know. what a horrible model, eh? <laughs> where I agree the, completely there. Yeah. Where, where is the the um. The Grit Orchestra, which started off celebrating the music of my, if anybody hasn't doesn't know it, it's, it, it it's, it's Greg has taken the music of Martin Bennett and orchestrated it for this amazing orchestra of classical jazz and traditional musicians, and each each group of musicians has strengths and weaknesses. I would argue, yeah, and totally. With, <clears throat> within. Uh, and it's a sort of democracy, so people are allowed to. You're not running it in an autocratic way, and people are allowed to change the score. The drummers we write our own parts, for example. And some of the traditional musicians don't read music, so they're having to learn completely new skills. The classical musicians, most of them don't improvise, so they're having to learn stuff and be in a more open situation. The jazz musicians are terrible. Uh, being following a conductor awful just <laughs> fucking awful i don't have no idea what's going on with your <laughs> d- i just don't know what's going on and um but what's beautiful is that everybody's strengths and weaknesses in different traditions and diff uh, are respected mm-hmm. and the fact that they're bringing an, an authenticity from their traditional knowledge to yeah. the party is valued so like difference and diversity is valued not it's not just tolerated it's valued it's actively searched for that's and the I thing and i think that's a, that is a model for human society the grit orchestra is a yeah totally and to try to to try to make sure what's on screen left oh wow is that the there's a my, little I can my, see um, hand there <laughs> my lovely assistant i oh look hang on a sec my assistant's coming in with with my. <laughs> so, thank you very much. I'll just guide you. Home. <clears throat> it's tough. It's tough at playtime. Playtime studios. Let's just talk a bit more about the bagels. Mm. And it's a wonderful mixture of of different traditions and skill sets and cultures and how, and how how did you how did it come about? It happened. You know, people talk about why things happen and they often get off on completely the wrong direction about why things happen. Things happen for all kinds of random reasons. There's not necessarily anything other than things just happen. But there was a member of the Bongo Club on New Street. Yeah. The Bongo Club on New Street was the kind of venue that Edinburgh needs, right? It needs like three or four of those in different parts of the city, right? If it wants things to grow and not these ridiculous nonsensical edifices like they built they're planning a new concert hall for the SCO just nonsense ludicrous ridiculous wrong end of the economy the bagels Salsa Celtica Martin Bennett all of these things they all came out of that place being around for us to meet Edinburgh Rock was on an interview and he was talking about Edinburgh in the 90s the, the way that it was this real melting pot mm. and particularly the folk who's playing with the jazzers and there was this mixing together of different scenes. And certainly, you're right, some of these venues and buildings played a, a role, but he also said it's the size of Edinburgh. Because it's so small, mm-hmm. the musicians that are there, they meet. I mean, you know, musicians will always find places. You know, it's like it's like underground water. We, we are the eternal spring. You know, we'll f- always find a way out somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily the best place, but the new the the bongo club is the place and so we met there as a tango band really because we, i was working with uh mcfalls and valentina the wonderful valentina uh phil had just moved up 
uh, he was kind of checking out the venues. Pete was playing there. I'd met Mario once, I think, in the jazz orchestra. It just kind of, we became, we all kind of bumped into each other through Valentina. She got us together to play tangos. And and it was great. It was like free bass kind of tangoing. It was just, you know, lead sheets and just enjoying yourself. I I was in my element because this was like, for me, this is one of the first times I'd been completely let off the hook since I was like 15, 16 years old, you know? And uh, I would just, I couldn't stop playing. I mean, I, I think I irritated everyone <laughs> in the tango band by, if Phil was here now, he would be nodding his head. I just, just played all the time, all the bloody time. And out of that <clears throat> came the bagels. We just met up and, um, and the bagels kind of took over. And Listen, Greg Lawson, we're going to have to stop. I know. Because I'm going to have to edit the crap out of this because it's too long. Oh, Even I'm sorry. All of it, it. No, it's not your fault. Yeah. You're just too interesting and you're too... It's like in the great orchestra when you, you, you start talking between numbers and I, I don't know if you prepare it, but you head off on these complex rambles. Uh, I, I don't never know if you prepare, plan actually. that or you just open your mouth and it comes out. Oh, I just open my mouth. Look, the thing is, I've always been frightened uh, playing the violin, you know? Music has always had a, a really strong association with fear for me. And it's funny because I'm not afraid of anything else. Well, sharks, actually. But I think that's kind of reasonable. <laughs> um, You're afraid sharks of and, music and sharks. The only things that frighten me, really. So the uh, ultimate fear would be a musical shark. Oh, well, a musical shark would actually... A shark a, with a, an accordion. A, no, that's frightening. Anything with an accordion is frightening. All right. Let's say goodbye then. So see you next week. Thanks, Tom. Lots of love. See you next week.